Hello and welcome to the MPS show episode number 524. I am your host Norman Sanzo and we got some news for you this week. So first up is word of Faust. Pinky should have had wings but the shy is an earth pony at heart. Uh, so we don't often get words of Faust here on EQD in 2023. So it's always fun to see her dip her toes back into ponies over on Twitter. A post about concept art for the show went viral over there, which had her chiming in on sorry, chiming on it talking about the original plans for some of the characters. We've known for a while that Pinky was based on Surprise Pegasus. And today, she revealed that Fluttershy, Fluttershy, sorry, Fluttershy is an earth pony at heart. She posted a follow-up as well. <coughs> uh, I'm so pleased by the big response to my last post about Fluttershy. Indulge me a bit as I point out that what so many like about her wings are story decisions I made to compensate for my unease at her anatomy. I'm glad my choices works for you. I think they work well too, Lauren Faust. Uh, and we had jokey uh, tweets uh, and a few jokey tweets. Maybe someday in the future we will see return to. <clears throat> All right, cool. So anywho, um, it seems that this post kind of blew up. And I got no idea who did this. <coughs> but anywho, um, it seems that somebody shared some original pictures of Fluttershy in her concept phase. And I'm not 100% sure how far along this is, but we do see some inkling of Earth Pony style of Fluttershy. I, I, I think one of the few design ideas for Fluttershy was Posey? I, I don't remember. But um, this was her without wings and whatnot. And it seems that the idea works. And yeah, me being a Fluttershy fan, I, I feel like this is cool trivia. And also, uh, seeing the a uh, whole thing work out like flesh uh, sorry Lauren South said that um let's just change them around like okay uh Pinkie Pie was surprised now let's try and make her into the Earth pony how would that work and let's take Fluttershy who was I think Posey I, I don't know why that name sucks out in my head but I th I think that's it but anywho let's let's try to take this originally Earth Pony who loves natures and whatnot, and let's turn her into a Pegasi who loves natures and whatnot. And it worked, it worked. And from that point on, the ball just kept on rolling, and it was fun. <clears throat> um, nothing much to say about that, but yeah, uh, let's move on to the next news. Next news is My Little Pony Generation 4 shows content is apparently still partly owned by Discovery Family, limiting what G5 can use. Fascinating. <clears throat> we are still trying to find a stream. Sorry. We are still trying to find a stream of the full panel, but we, but a few people that were the event have confirmed this one. Apparently, uh, over at PonyCon Holland, ah, I see, uh, Gillian Brown, sorry, uh, Gillian Barrow, reveal a very interesting little fact about why we might not see the whole lot of crossovers between the universe of G4 and G5. Apparently, it all comes down to licensing and usage, Discovery Family still owns part of Friendship is Magic show content, which lets them change charge fees 
whenever a G4 pony appear in something like make your mark, <coughs> sorry, make your mark, Twilight, as a specific example, needs to be paid for whenever she makes an appearance. Wow. Uh, we try to dig up the specificity on this one, but for now, it does explain why they seem to light on the throwbacks. It's always a shame when corporate nonsense butts in on the creative things. So, okay. Um, this explains a whole bunch of things. Like, this explains a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. <clears throat> so, anywho, um, let's break things down. So, apparently, uh, a pony convention in Holland called Pony Con Holland had GM Barrow on stage, and I guessing people were asking questions. And she revealed that, hey, corporate is butting in. So, you're probably wondering, what does that have to do and why don't they pay them? I want my G4 ponies in G5. God dang it. Uh, one of the few reasons why is because money. Money is a big issue. And doing the show is already expensive. So, if we hire, or sorry, if we get, Let's just say Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash is marketable. Let's see. So if we get Rainbow Dash into G5, not only do we need to create the assets for Rainbow Dash, <coughs> that's going to take time and money. And then we need to hire Ashley Ball to get her to voice Rainbow Dash. So that's money on the side. So okay, that can be help. And then we need to pay Discovery family for uh, using the rights. Not knowing what the agreement would be, that's going to cost a lot. So, with all that on on the stack, like you have the animators to pay for creating new assets, you have uh, the voice actors you need to pay for doing the voice, you need to pay Discovery on top of doing um, all of the cameos. And when you Think about it. It's not worth it to have a cameo per se like that. And you're probably wondering, they did it with Twilight. Yes, but how short was that? And how clear was she? She was like a, if I remember right, she, she was like a hologram of something, something like in Star Wars. <clears throat> so in the end, how much did... Um, Hasbro had to pay for that little snippet of Twilight to be in the show. So I, I'm not saying that just do it, you cowards, but I understand why they won't do it. But I'm in the boat like, do it, you cowards. But when you, on top of what's going on, when you think about it again, G5 is not doing as great as G4. If they were making G4 money, they would just say, okay, cool, let's spend the money. We, we got John, Del John Delancey on. Let's get more people. <coughs> so, but with G5, they have to kind of tighten their belt a bit because, in my personal opinion, I don't see them rolling down the hill and whatnot. It's more of a uphill battle, like pushing the rock up the hill. But yeah, that, that's very fascinating. And the last news for the week is Renegade Games reveal Dark Side over Equestria RPG Adventure and a preview page. So, uh, Renegade has fully revealed their next adventure uh, for the My Little Pony RPG. They have running Dark Side over Equestria. This one had a listing back in July, but we finally have images. And what's this? Uh, and expanded details about it. <clears throat> Head on below for stuff. Pre-orders, right? Pre-order now, December 2023. For limited pre-order, comes with a PDF copy of the My Little Pony role-playing role -playing game, Dark Side of Equestria Adventure 
series books and no additional cost. Awesome. Uh, please read and feel okay. The PDF will be added to your account. Okay, cool. Mm, shadows over Equestra. The land of Equestra is about to face a deadly new threat from the mysterious changelings. Queen Chrysalis plots tirelessly against the protectors of Equestria. Sorry, the protectors of the elements of harmony and defeating her will need cunning, insight, and the power of friendship to prevail. In this six part campaign, your ponies ooh, six part that's cool. Uh, in this six part campaign, your pony's character will face all manner of danger and adventure as they protect Ponyville and Equestria from a ground growing shadow. <coughs> Can your character rise to the challenge and stand together to face the deadly mystery? This supplementary content uh, sorry, this supplement contains everything you need to run an epic game for characters beginning to level one through five. Oh, that's fascinating. Huh? Uh, feature six adventure that can be played individually or linked into one campaign, uh, and a array of new threats, uh, threats and monsters to challenge your characters. Full detail on mysterious changelings, who, and how. To, sorry, uh, full detail on the mysterious changelings. Okay, and how to play one as a character of your own. Ah, cool. Change things, origins, and nine new shape shifting perks. So cool. Uh, a section of new tree influence, hive mind, uh, infatuate, outsider, and seven spells for pony characters. Uh, this adventure is recommended for four to six characters between one to five. Uh, requires the core rule book. At a glance. <clears throat> so, yay, uh, this is the introduction page. Not gonna read it. And that's about it. Cool. So, um, if you play this, this is gonna be a great addition to your campaign. Um, there's a lot. So, um, I guess I have to do a quick breakdown of what the hey this is and what you're getting yourself into if you go get it. <clears throat> so, um, this is what you call a module, an, uh, an expansion to the core rulebook game that you have. So, in the core rulebook of your pony role-playing game, you, you have the essentials of to build a character, to give it stats, to give it abilities, and to give it stuff. And as the dungeon master or game master, you have the necessity, uh, sorry, the as, sorry, you have the necessary tools to create a game. Uh, you have your basic maps, uh, setting scenarios, uh, how to interact and stuff, and let the players do what they want. So technically, you also can guide them to where you want to go. That's the core rulebook. So uh, more <clears throat> books like this and others are called expansions or modules. What this do is, it adds on top of whatever the core rulebook has. So, like this one here mentions that, hey, uh, there's new, there's new, um, fully detailed um, characteristics to build a changeling characters because in the core rulebook you only have earth pony, pegasi, and unicorns. And as it uh, as more module comes out. Do you add in more stuff, more spells, more backgrounds, more stuff, uh, you know, more, 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 more and more. So for uh, Shadows over Equestria, they are giving you a character build for a change link. They're giving you um, origins, uh, character origins, and they're giving you um, three new influence and seven new pony spells. So there is a lot. <clears throat> so uh, expansions are well, I mentioned before, adds on to the core rulebook. 
So with this one, you add on here, you can get a lot of, um, you can add more into the game. So, <coughs> so with this one, you can add stuff like, oh, I, I want to have a adventure, blah, 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 so on. So usually what um, role players would love to do or like to do is, or this is usually up to the dungeon master or the game master is, okay, um, we have the campaign running for almost six months now. I, I think it's time to add some spice. Oh, let me see. Ah, I'll pick something on topic. Um, Dark Skies of Equestria. I'll, I'll pick this in and I'll see what I can do with it. Okay, I, I'll just take the first chapter of the module and put it in and introduce new stuff for the players to do. I'll do that. And then I'll go back to the main campaign, slowly sprinkling in tidbits of what to come. And as a, what you call this? Player, you get excited. Ooh, that was fun in you. What happened? And stuff. And as it goes on, uh, the GM will add in this and that. Uh, clues until they finish probably with the sky, uh, Dark Skies of Equestria. I, I mean, if you want to play the Dark Skies of Equestria only, it's possible too. Depending on how your party is and how experienced they are with playing because <clears throat> they say that the recommended level is 1 to 5. And if you've been playing for a very long time and depending how the game rule of leveling works, you could probably be at a level 5 or 6 when you start entering. And by that point, it takes the GM to balance things out with, oh, how do I want to make the enemies... At, that's right. How how do how strong do I want to make the enemies, and how difficult do I want to make the puzzles? That is up. That that is all entirely on the game master, and as the game master, you've been playing with your party for a very long time now, so you have a decent imagination for. Oh, my players are not that great with puzzles, so I'll just tone whatever puzzles I have down. And they're really good at combat. So I'll increase the difficulty by one. <clears throat> and so on and so on. So yes, um, that is expansions in a nutshell. So with this one, I feel like this one would be really great to put in at the beginning of the campaign to introduce the main villain or as they all uh, as they say bbeg big bad evil guy <clears throat> so by doing this you can have your normal campaign with the whole um pony uh slice of life thing and then you can introduce slowly introduce the big bad evil guy into the fray letting the players know that ah i see we we have this big threat here, and they're really evil. Hmm. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. <clears throat> so, yes, um, this is something fun. I do wish I have a group to play this with, but my group probably won't be interested in it. But, anywho, yes, that's the news for this week. Um, so, uh, let's move on to. Other things. Uh, what have I been doing with my week? So, nothing much really. So, I'm going to break things down. Okay, today I'm recording on the 29th of October. And it's my birthday! Yay! So, yay, birthday, cool, um, awesome. It's just the same, really. Probably, maybe later in the day. It's going to be fun. I don't know. I I, I haven't seen cake yet. So, that's going to be something. And then, um, yesterday, uh, my LGS had a community day where they were food and games and so on. It was fun. I managed to play Secret Hitler. It was something else. 
<clears throat> the game was fun though. Um, we we had to kind of how how did it was it, it it was pretty interesting where we need to vote in people and since this was our first time and we we only really played one game honestly we should have played a second game because we already knew how the mechanic works but we we only played one so basically what happened after that we just played a bunch of magic gatherings and uh eight and then i had to went home early so it, it was fun it was a memorable time and then <clears throat> um let's see what what else happened i think i i didn't do much like the week has been pretty um busy with work but it's just meh Not, nothing new all right so the question on everybody's mind is why are you wearing those headphones with a microphone to the site while you're already having a microphone in front of you all right um remember way back when when some of you were asking hey uh why does the sound only come from this channel uh and then some of you might have noticed why does the sound on this episode sound crappy long story short a lot of things happened drivers were updated and yeah so <clears throat> Uh, I think I mentioned this before, but I'm just going to do a quick breakdown. The microphone that I have right now only records to one channel. Uh, uh, that channel could be left or right, depending on where I plug in the mic. Um, as for now, uh, it's coming from the left. So that's... Uh, well, if I were recording this to video, you'll be hearing left. So... That's a problem for people who have uh, dual setups or stereo headphones or whatnot. So the way I bypass that is to edit the video and edit the audio so that it becomes stereo. So with this thing right now on my head, uh, the thing that I'm doing here is that uh, this is recording for the video only. So it comes in as stereo, which is great. I don't have to do much and it sounds good and it sounds great. So, what else? Um, so, this is one way for me to kind of fix the issue and kind of skirt around getting the sound good. It, let's just say that it's just, uh, it, it's a workaround that works. So, I, I'm not complaining. But anywho, uh, that's about it. So, uh, let's wrap things up. <clears throat> so, if you guys have any questions, suggestions, or uh, concerns for the show, you can contact us at abcgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. Uh, the show's Twitter account is at the ABS show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Um, also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. Links will be in, to, in the show notes below. Uh, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review the session podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and Master Flag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll catch you guys next week with another episode of the BS Show. See ya!